Well, hello there, friends. I got something really special for you today. We're going to make a crawfish etouffee. Creole style. That means I put a little tomato in there. <laughs> You're going to love it. We're going to start with a beautiful brown roux. And we're going to put the trinity in there, the celery, the, the peppers, and the onion. And we're going to put it, all that in the beautiful stock, and we're going to cook the crawfish in there. Yeah, I think you're going to love it, friends. I know you're going to love it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're making it right now for you. Okay, friends. Let's get ready. <laughs> so, you know, I, I call it a, a Creole etouffee and not a Cajun etouffee because we're going to put tomatoes. <laughs> and, uh, and the Cajun etouffee, you don't put tomatoes. Just a little bit of tomato, just, you know, because I love a tomato. You know, it's supposed to be the Italian part in meat, and so you got to put tomatoes. But, uh, you know what? Let me talk later. <laughs> Let me start cooking, friends. I got a, um, a healthy cup of... Uh, of uh, clarified butter. Uh, you can use oil if you want, but you know I like butter. So clarified butter is cool because it's got a really high smoke point, and uh, we're going to be perfectly fine with that. And we're going to make a roux. And we're going to put uh, uh, um, uh, a three-quarter cup of flour, three-quarter cup of flour for a half a cup of, uh, of clarified butter, or oil if you want. Clarified butter, to me, that's better than oil. <laughs> and uh, the reason why we use clarified butter, friends, is because the clarified butter, um, uh, uh, as the milk protein removed, which means it's not going to burn. Now, we got to pay attention, friends, when we make a roux, because uh, it's very easy, very quick to burn the the flour. What happened is the, the, the flour, I'm using a whisk to make sure it's really good, all broken up so there's no lump in there. The flour will set in the bottom of the pot and easily, easily burn, friends. So we're going to create a, uh, this is a blown roux at this point. We're going to create what we call a, a brown roux, not a dark brown roux, kind of a light brown roux. I think for seafood, it's more delicate. And uh, so, to go back to the Cajun versus the Creole, you know, my good friend, that may he rest in peace, Paul Poudon, would always tell me, he says, you know what? The Creole is the city people. The Cajun is the country people. And uh, we don't put tomatoes in there. But he said, I love it with tomatoes too. So we're going to make it with a little tomatoes, okay? The difference between the spices, between Creole seasoning versus Cajun seasoning the Creole seasoning is, uh, has more of the herbs in it, a lot more oregano and, uh, and, uh, and the thyme, a lot more than the Cajun. Cajun is mostly peppery, peppery and white pepper and all that. Nothing wrong with it, but it's a lot more peppery. So now that my, um, my flour uh, is, as you can see, very well um, uh, distributed, it's, there's no more lump right there. We're going to keep mixing this, friends. We're going to keep mixing this until it becomes uh, uh, light brown and then dark brown, not too dark brown. We're going to continue doing it, and then what we will do is um, uh, we are going to uh, put some uh, onion. I got, this is one onion. Can you believe that? Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> when I say one onion, that's a one onion. And people said, oh, those are... Um, uh, GMO, whatever they call it. No, they're not. It's an organic farm locally right here and grows this. Look at this beautiful onion, friends. This is like a three-pound onion. It'd be great to do an onion video. I already did that, so <laughs> I'd have cut an onion. But this is perfect, isn't it? So um, we're going to put the onion in there, and then we're going to put the trinity. The trinity is the onion, the celery, and, uh, and, uh, and, and the bell peppers. And um, we're going to put all this in there together. But first, we're going to put the onion. And then we're going to put the other one. They're not going to have much time to caramelize, friends, OK? So we're going to continue doing it. And then we're going to use a crawfish, crawfish tails. And, and uh, you can see them right here, fresh, uh, a crawfish tail. Um, now, in Fort Lauderdale, 
uh, sorry to tell you folks, but we can't find no fresh crawfish. We, there's some companies that ship them air mail, uh, Federal Express Air, and you can get them from New Orleans. There's a few companies that do it. But when you get them, you gotta, you gotta clean them. You gotta put them in water, get rid of all the sands and all that. Then you gotta boil them, so it's a process. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's a process versus buying them already frozen, friends. And, uh, and they're nice. I mean, I went to three grocery stores, four grocery stores, two fishmongers, just to see if I could find some fresh crawfish. Nobody's got them. No, not here in Fort Lauderdale. I know if you go to New Orleans, you're going to find plenty of it out there, right? So we're going to continue cooking this. You see, it's not really changing color that much yet, but you got to keep mixing, friends. It's not something you can just put it on and go do something. No, you come back, oh, you're in big doo-doo, because the flour will have fallen on the bottom and it burns. So I got one big onion in here, and I got about, not that I'm measuring, friends, I would say a cup and a half, two cups of, uh, two cups of celery, cut small bell pepper, green peppers, you know. If I was not following a traditional Creole recipe, I would put red bell pepper. It needs some red in here. That's why I'm putting the tomato. That's why I'm putting the tomatoes. And then we got scallions. And uh, another um, ingredient that could be controversial to some people is garlic. Uh, Paul Pudum didn't put any garlic in his. In his. And uh, I liked it, but I told him, I said, I'm going to put garlic in mine. He said, you do that. And he tested and he goes, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> we'll make a Cajun out of you someday. Anyway, friends, you see, look, be careful. You see what's happening? You see right there? I want to show you. Let me see. Too late. I, I corrected right away. But I'm telling you, friends, if you don't mix so every so often, just take your whisk. And don't be afraid to do this, okay? The pot I'm using is cast iron, but it's an enamel cast iron. And an enamel, an enamel cast iron, uh, after you use it a lot, they're not non-stick surface, but after you use it a lot, it becomes a non-stick surface. This part right here, friends, I have, it's got to be 35, 40 years old. It's got to be. It's got to be because I've been using it for, I love it. So, you, you see, you keep mixing it, keep mixing it because it's going to, see? By the way, from when I started, you've probably seen that the color has changed, right, friends? So I told you about all the ingredients. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue cooking it, and I'll come back. Look, you see, look, look, look what happened. I want, I want you to see. You see the way that, boom, boom, all of a sudden, you see, look. You can see, right, the flour is attaching in the bottom. So don't let it happen, friends. And every so often, take your whisk. So you can do this in a cast iron, or you can do it in a pot, then you can use, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can't use it in a non-stick pot here, friends, because you'll be destroying it. You know, which brings me back to some time, you know, I used some of my cast, uh, my uh, non-stick fry pan, and we said, oh, you're using metal in it. My fry pan are diamond coated, and they're perfectly happy if I use it on metal, as long as I'm not abusing it. I'm not in there cutting it, you know. All right, friends, we're going to continue cooking this. See, look, it's doing good. You see, it's starting to get browned. Uh, it's starting to get brown. It's starting to smell a little nutty. <laughs> a little nutty. It fits perfectly well in here. A little nutty. We're all nutty around here. So... <laughs> It feels good. So look, see, you see it? See it? See right It's turning brown, friends. All right, we're going to cook a little bit more. Let it get a little brown, a more brown. I don't want, like I said, I don't want to get it too brown. Now, if I'm making a, a gumbo, then I like it to be darker than that. I, I, almost like chocolate brown. But I'm, when I'm doing a, a, a crawfish étouffée, what does the word étouffée mean, friend? French, in French, étouffée means smutter smother like you're, you're smothering somebody and uh and uh, oh mommy you're talking i see it. i gotta be careful um <laughs> that's what etouffee means it means you're smothering somebody and you're smothering the uh, the shrimp or you can make it with chicken also it'll be fantastic here you go my friends look we're looking good you know i thought i was gonna cut break and uh, and having to come back but you know what it's doing good it's almost the color I want. Some of you are going to say, oh, it's not dark enough. Yeah, you know, it's your right to pay. Friends, you make it however it makes you happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy with having a light brown. So before we had a brown roux, then we went to a light brown roux. And we're never really going to get to a dark brown roux because, like I said, I like it not too brown. But I'll tell you what. I'll come back in a minute. Give me another minute or two, friends. And, uh, and then we'll go. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, friends. You see, it got a little darker. Like I said, you want to make it darker, you make it darker, just keep going. 
And uh, 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 darker you make it, stronger. But remember, darker you make it also, stronger you make it, and less it's going to have the ability to thicken because it loses some of the thickening things. So we're going to put a big onion in here first. Oh, that's an onion, isn't it? Oh. And we're going to cut that onion right there. We're going to cut that onion right there. That reminds me of Justin Wilson. What a nice man he was. Remember with the suspender? I guarantee them onions are delicious. He was really good. For some of you, I remember. Some of you probably too young to remember. But he was an amazing uh, Cajun chef. I really enjoyed him. Nice man. I guarantee them onions are delicious. And he would tell you stories all the time. He would tell you jokes. He was really, I loved watching him. So look, we're going to caramelize the onion a little bit, friends. We can't really caramelize them so much because we got this flour that is ready to burn on us. So we have to be very careful. You see the way I'm using that wooden spoon and, and scraping the bottom of my pot? If you could be here right now, friends, you would love it. it smells delicious. I am going to put uh, some of my Creole seasoning. And uh, I'm going to use about uh, two spoons for now. To a teaspoon. That's a Creole seasoning that I make, but use uh, whatever Creole seasoning you want. We make it. Uh, we love it. And um, it's very herby. It's got a lot of uh, uh, fresh herbs. I mean, fresh herbs, dry herbs in it. And uh, a little cayenne in it. So, but it's not too spicy. It's really, 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 really good. Garlic, onion, of course, all that. All right, friends, we are now going to put. Oh, the smell is starting to be fantastic, friends. We're now going to put our celery and our peppers. And now we got a whole trinity in there. And we're going to coat those guys. And then we're going to put our stock. Stock. Oh, I don't think I told you anything about my stock. I'm using a shrimp stock. Because I got it. A shrimp stock. Okay, but you may not have a shrimp stock, my friends. And if you don't, what do you do? Don't worry. Just use a chicken stock, friends. It'll be perfectly fine. And, you know, unless you can find a nice seafood stock somewhere. I am using a, um, a, a shrimp stock. But use... Put a little bit more of the uh, of the spice for now. I got a, a scallion. I got to cut the white and the and the green part of it here. The white takes longer to cook, so we're putting it now. The green we put it all the end. All right, we're starting. We're starting to look good, my friends. All right. Oh, we got to coat all those vegetables, and then we're gonna put a little bit of tomato. Like I said, remember you want to make it Cajun. You don't want to make it. Uh, Creole, then don't put the tomatoes in there, okay? And uh, and just a couple of spoons of tomatoes, okay? That's all it is. There you go, two and a half. <laughs> don't measure it. This cooking, friends, we're not sending a man on the moon. I keep saying that. A little bit of garlic again. That's some chef don't like to put it in. I like to put it in, so I'm gonna put it in. Little, so I don't offend too many people. Uh, we're gonna put some Worcestershire sauce. And this you gotta measure carefully, friends. All right, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I am using a, um, a Louisiana hot sauce. I love it. I, I just think it's a delicious sauce, Louisiana hot sauce. Use whatever so sauce you want. You certainly don't have to even put any hot sauce if you don't want it on there, my friends. And now we're gonna put the stock. See, it's a very simple dish to make. Very simple dish to make, friends. All right, we're gonna put the stock right on there. A, a chicken stock will do just fine. So we're going to put one, two, three. And this is for the good measure, three, because it was not full completely. So I will write down exactly, friends, the, uh, the measurement that I use in this recipe. I will write it down exactly for you. Okay. And then we're going to put just a little bit more, like a lot more, actually. We're going to let all this cook. Three, so we're going to go for four. All right. And we're going to go for four. There you go. Four. Just four. Four nice full ones. About 24 ounces of stock. But like I said, I will write the recipe correctly, friends, so you can have it. We're going to let this cook nice and soft. Okay, we're going to let that cook for about uh, 45 minutes until the vegetables are nice. Now, the crawfish, like I said, those are already cooked, friends. So, uh, uh, we don't need to cook them. We can put them at the end. We don't want to cook them right now. But if you get them uh, fresh and uh, you, you have to cook them first, 
And so you can you can actually saute them with the Creole seasoning on the side and add them to it, but you got to put them earlier if you need to cook them. Those are cooked, so I'll put them toward the end, just a few minutes before the end. It'll be perfectly fine. All right, friends, we're going to continue cooking this. And... Um, and we'll adjust seasoning in a minute. Right. Oh, we can put some salt right now. Let's just do that. And then we'll adjust this, the, uh, the spice later on. Now, in my stock, friends, I have no salt in my stock because it's homemade. But if you're using a store butt, be careful because there's a lot of sodium in there. So let it cook for a while. Let all the, the flavors marry together. And depends the seasoning you're using. There's probably some salt already in there too. So be careful with the salt. You'll test it and you'll adjust it toward the end. There's nothing wrong with that. All right? We're going to let this cook for a little while. And I'll come back and uh, we'll finish it together. Okay, friends? Be back in a minute. Okay, friends. Well, you know, you base it on um, how long you want or, or how crunchy you want the vegetable to be. I, I don't like them to be here, smooshy. <laughs> it's a new culinary term, mushy vegetables. Yeah, I like a little bite to it. So it's up to you how much you want it. The thickness, I'm very happy with it. Um, again, that's, uh, that's something that is, uh, is up to you, friends. I have a whole pound of, uh, of those crawfish in there. It's going to be probably an overkill of the crawfish, but, uh, you know, I'd rather have more than not enough. <laughs> so we're going to put them in there, friends. And then uh, we're going to put the, uh, the scallion, the green part of the scallion, then it doesn't really need to get cooked that much, just to get it warmed up a little bit. So, friends, we're going to let this cook for about a minute, a minute and a half, and then we're going to plate it, and then we're going to eat it. <laughs> so, uh, thickness, up to you, friends. If it's too liquid, you can add a little bit of cooked roux, if you have, cooked roux, if you have, or a little bit of cornstarch diluted, in, diluted right, or cornstarch. And, um, and if it's too thick, for you, then you can put a, a little more stock. I always have a pot of stock going just in case, you know, just in case we need it. But it looks good to me right now. All right, friends? So we'll come back in a minute, and we plate it, and we eat it. <laughs> okay, friends. Serve it with rice. That's where you're going to do a nice rice. So I did a recipe on that. And you know what I like to do, friends? I take the rice, uh, like a, some kind of a souffle cup, right? And I put it, pack it in. Pack it in there. Because if you don't pack it in... You're going to have a tough time uh, taking it out and make it look halfway decent. I put the cup first, friends, because what I like to do, and remember, if you're reheating this, you got to shake it, shake it, shake it, meaning um, uh, uh, let me get the plate a little closer here. So what we do is we put some all the way around our plate, right? Serve it however you want, friends. I just think it's a cool way to do it, but uh, I'm sure... Everybody's gonna have their way of doing it. This is like a big uh, soup plate kind of a kind of a thing, <laughs> kind of a thing. Uh, it's a big serving. Let me tell you, friends. This is like a, it's gonna be a very big serving. But nobody's complaining, not me anyway. And and we have it right there. Clean it up, make it look halfway decent, right? And then we're gonna take the cup that has the rice in it, right? Let's make sure this is clean. Right, and then we take the cup, and we take it right out of there, and see the rice. Now, all of a sudden, we look cleaner, right, so it doesn't look so slappy, because, you know, this is not like a fancy-looking dish. It's just what it is, and then, you know, what I like to do, I like to decorate it with the green of the scallion a little bit. Actually, I like to do it better than what I'm doing right now, but, <laughs> but you get an idea with a couple of them on top. And voila, my friends, this is right there, my Creole. <laughs> this is right there, my uh, Creole étouffée, friends. And uh, so you, you just break a little bit of the rice in there, and you just, you got to eat it with it, friends. You got to eat it. You got to eat it with it. And the rice is very important, huh? Mm. Wow. Wow. Mmm. Friends, this, you know you're eating an etouffee. Mm. The Creole seasoning is so important in there. Mm. The crawfish are fabulous. You don't have crawfish, not easy to get. 
No shrimps, friends. Same principle. It will be delicious with shrimps. With shrimps just as well. Stock, you don't have a shrimp stock? Use a chicken stock. There's always another way around it. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell, friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Boah, let me tell you. Jack, when do you test this? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to eat all this. You got a whole pot right there. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. That's perfect. I love it. All right. Mm-mm-mm.